It's kind of a miracle, isn't it? Thank you to those who commented in the last video, Good Will Hunting, a video that targeted both the Leafs and the Habs, but it's kind of funny because this one is also talking about both those teams. So, without further ado, let's get into today's topic, but before we go over that, man, you know, I got something kind of sentimental to share. You know what I realized? Today is the day before hockey. Hockey is back tomorrow, and you know, it's so difficult to try and process, and I guess because I'm recording this video the night of Monday, January 11th, with the intention of uploading it in the morning, January 12th, let's just go over a fun topic, shall we? We'll save the serious stuff for when I wake up later in the day, and then make a video about it then. We'll talk about waivers, who gets picked off, who gets claimed, if anybody is still on the Canadiens organization that was in the previous 24 hours. But what we're going over here is an article posted on PensionPlanPuppets.com. This is the Toronto Maple Leafs fan version of SB Nation. If you're not familiar, they have a different subsection of the website for different fans of different NHL teams, and this is the version that caters to Toronto. There was this article published earlier yesterday titled this, Why We Hate the Montreal Canadiens. And it was posted onto the Habs subreddit, and that's where I saw it initially, and I read through this. I had myself a laugh, and I was like, you know what? I want to make a commentary talking about this article. So before we even begin, I'll leave a link down in the description. Go ahead, drive up their ad rates, and check out what is essentially just a very... You know, I'm going to say childish piece on the Montreal Canadiens. And sure, I think that's kind of the point. They're talking about this in a context where it looks like they're voluntarily roasting, I guess, other teams in the league. I'm not actually too sure what's up with that, so forgive me for my ignorance. But this is the article right here, Why We Hate the Habs. And let's go over what exactly this Leafs-centered article has to say about Montreal's own. Montreal is truly a beautiful city, especially if you like subway restaurants and strip clubs. And who doesn't? And, uh, okay, that's a very weird way to start off an article. Like it or not, because Montreal certainly does have its own identity. To be honest, I haven't actually been to Montreal. Like, how crazy is that? I'm a guy who sits here talking about the Habs once every few days, if not every day, and I've never actually been to the city. Who knows? Maybe it's because my French isn't all that great. But... I'm pretty sure that Montreal is a very nice place that isn't really primarily defined by the abundance of subway restaurants and strip clubs. But, you know, let's just go past this first paragraph because it talks about Montreal as a city. Speaking of Montreal, have you heard? The Canadians have won the most Stanley Cups. Yes, they won virtually all of them. During a period where there were six teams or when the league had just expanded so rapidly that there were new franchises made entirely out of Muppets. Now, hold up. That's honestly kind of true. Like, to be honest, I don't want to make it seem like I'm hating on the Habs or whatever, but... Hey, the Habs did win a majority of their Cups in a time where there were less teams, naturally making the odds of them winning a lot higher, and there were other times when the Canadians won Stanley Cups when there were expansion teams that were just made out of what this article says, Muppets. However, at the end of the day, they still have the most Stanley Cups. The Toronto Maple Leafs have been around forever, so have the Bruins and the Rangers and all these other teams. The Canadians still have more Cups than all of them, so... yeah... <laughs> I don't know what else there is to say about that, but yeah, um, continuing on with this little piece right here. The article then goes over and roasts how the Canadians like honoring their players. Take a look at this. They won't rest until Guy Ledoud, who was a fourth right wing in 1957, is appropriately celebrated. And I don't know if he's making a joke here talking about how Guy Lafleur, obviously he's just pulling the name Guy Lafleur and changing it up to some random guy, making it seem like... Any player who played with the Habs at some point is honored. Well, I'll tell you this, man. The Habs have been an organization for like a hundred years. You're not going to go through this organization's history and not find players who are of significance. Even just the slightest of victories were led to by certain players on the team. So I can totally acknowledge for a team that has such deep history to consistently, you know honoring the guys that have played for their team. The Habs are very proud of their history, and justly so, even if it's probably time to shut up about it now that several graduating classes at McGill have lived their whole lives without seeing the Habs win. Okay. Hey, what about 1967? Leafs fans don't bring up 1967. Everyone else does. 
Okay, okay. Spoiler alert, things that happened a long time ago are old, yes, but that doesn't really mean that we're not allowed to talk about them, so... yeah? I mean, same thing with the 67 Leafs. I mean, people still bring that up once in a while because, hey, they're allowed to. Take a look at this, though. This is what they talk about when it comes to the current situation of the Canadians. This is where they speak about what Mark Bergevin added in the offseason. A bad defenseman he overpaid. He's talking about Edmondson, which I'm sure will go better this time. He's referring to the Carl Alsner contract. And I'll just say this to that, hey man, if Edmondson becomes Carl Alsner, then my gosh, we're going to have ourselves so many funny storylines to go on with this team. But hey, Edmondson is a Stanley Cup champion. I guess Alsner was too, or actually no, he was barely off the team when they won the cup. So nah, he's not a Stanley Cup champion. I guess there's one edge that Edmondson has over Alsner. A backup goalie, thereby spending $15 million in net, where spending on goalies guarantees you nothing. Caveat to that, they signed into an extension that was cheaper and... They're in a position where they can afford it because it's only going to be $15 million for one year. A winger who scored one goal last year. Okay, Josh Anderson has so much more to prove than what he proved last year because he was injured last year. Just something, 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 Corey Perry. Yeah, I'm not reading that. Okay, you know, uh, that's fair. That's fair. By the time this video uploads, who knows if Corey Perry is even still a member of the Habs. We'll have another update video talking about that. And Tyler Toffoli, who was fine. I love the appreciation here for Tyler Toffoli as a guy who was cheering for him back when he was in Vancouver. But that's what this article says. The Canadians have added in the offseason, taken every shot they can at the players that were put onto this team. They then take shots at the Jonathan Drouin for Mikhail Sergachev trade. Talking about how Sergachev is good, how Drouin is not all too great, yada yada yada. You know you've seen this a whole bunch before. There are a few other discussions talking about, oh, Kotkaniemi, Suzuki, and then they say this nice part about Claude Julien. He's exempt from being made fun of in this article because he's coming back from a heart attack and I actually kind of like him. I mean, that's blunt, but at least the writer here is honest. And then the article concludes with a few other stuff. So, yeah, you know, let us all raise a glass and a toast to Guy Ledoud, a hell of a player. Again, a joke about how the Canadians have such a deep, rich history that they're always talking about the old guys to the point where if you don't know what's going on with the old guys, the guys who are literally like playing during the war and all that stuff, it doesn't really seem all too impactful, but I mean, hey, all it takes is getting a Howie Morenz card on your hut team, and all of a sudden you're spending two hours looking at this guy, videos and articles talking about what he was as a hockey player, because you're interested in that guy who is now your second line center on your hot team. Believe me, that's a true story. But you know, I don't want to go at this with a combative attitude, because of course, that's what the writer probably would have wanted to see out of somebody like me. But, you know, I'll give my props. This is a forceful attempt at trying to make fun of a fan base that you know absolutely will get pissed off about this article because Habs fans, they're kind of crazy. They overreact to things. Yeah, I can say that as a Habs fan, and I'm pretty sure all the people in the comments will agree. I'll give this a nice solid C+. The roast, in my opinion, is a little bit dry. I don't really think it's too creative, but there are indeed some light jabs in there that I did find somewhat funny. It's just the evaluation of some of the other stuff, in my opinion, kind of brings down the overall feel of the article, talking about the guys they acquired and just using every sentence as an opportunity to bash them. I mean, Corey Perry, that would make sense because Corey Perry is Corey Perry, but you know, I'll give it an A for effort, C plus overall for its execution. So talk to me in the comments about this piece right here, why we hate the Habs from a Toronto Maple Leafs point of view. If you agree with all this stuff, then feel free to express that. If you disagree, then feel free to express that. I don't know if I want to go out there and say, oh man, let's go into comments and we'll come up with comebacks and we'll retaliate against this article and come up with our own insults about the Maple Leafs, yada, yada, yada. I don't know if I want to do that, to be honest. I think most of the people that watch this YouTube channel are very civil, so I don't think they'd go to that length. But, you know, if you want to talk about that, then I guess you could. If you made it to the end of this video, then comment down in the comment section below GTA 5. Because GTA is the greater Toronto area and GTA 5 is a video game that is all based around conflict and it's kind of the vibe that I'm getting from this article over here, the satirical, kind of cynical humor going on in the subtext of this article. So that's what I'm thinking about in the comments section. Comment down below to let me know if you made it to the end of this video. But tell me in the comments what you thought about this piece. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.